So, um, yes, I think the topic emotional vulnerability because it sits with me and it's something that I love doing and I love digging into people's brains, hearts and their lives. I'm a life coach as well. I'm from Bulgaria and I've been working with children for 25 years and then I did the life coaching course which was actually for me to find out who I am, why I'm here and what I'm going to do, what am I going to give to this world because it was here, it was banging, it was so powerful that I can't even describe it with human words. So my journey started and I'm going to talk about my journey because I think we learn, like you said, from our pains and sufferings and not only from those pains, we can make somebody else relate to us. So my journey started um, three years ago with a lot of meditation. I didn't know why I had to sit still for hours. Something was calling me. Something was telling me, drop the three kids, drop the housework, drop everything that you are used to and start paying attention to what is this nagging feeling and that huge amount of love that comes from you. Alright, wasn't easy because my husband thought I'm getting depressed and uh, who's going to look at the kids, who's going to look to the house. But the funny thing is, by sitting and acknowledging who I was, I started seeing things, I started hearing things, I started seeing in people more pain and suffering that related back to me. So I understood that we're all one, that we're all connected, and that our stories are pretty much the same. So why emotional vulnerability? I do interviews with people who would like to come and share their stories. We all have millions of stories. Through sharing emotional vulnerability, through those stories, we connect. And the only way to live a powerful life is to connect to others through those stories. That's why I welcome anyone who wants to come and speak of their story. For me, that's very important. Saying that, talking about emotions, what is it that you know about emotions? And what is it the first thing that comes to you? Children, and how they have free emotions, how they explode when they want to explode, without thinking, shall I be quiet? Shall I not do it because I'll be judged? No, they just do it. But we, as adults, we know that we have to suppress emotions somehow. Why? Because we might hurt somebody, we might look naive, we might be um, too much, instead of learning how to work with emotions. So emotions can be weakness, only if you want to see them as weakness, and emotions can be actually strength. And I love you speaking through your emotional story, because you touched many people. If many of us can speak and be true to ourselves, I think that's what's going to happen. You're going to have millions of beautiful stories. When I say beautiful stories, they will be painful, so okay. And it's okay. So, I want to tell you a story of how important it is to find who you are in order to use your emotional vulnerability in life. When you know who you are, you start giving from that authentic place of yourself. You stop thinking, She's judging me, he's judging me. They put their beliefs on me. No, you don't allow that. There's a very thin line that knowing who you are in your body is the power of speaking your emotions with authority and with freedom. And like Ina said, freedom is one of the things we are aiming to get in this life. So I want to tell you a story that sits with me so much for a very long time. There was once a god. His name was Brahma. He was alone in the universe and he wanted to play with someone. He didn't have anyone, so he decided to create the goddess Maya. And he said to her, I would like to play with you now. Goddess Maya said, No, 
we got to have a very, very interesting game. But first, I want you to do a few things for me. And he said, okay, come on, tell me, because I really want to play with someone. So the goddess Maya asked, can you please, please create a place with beautiful sky, with beautiful clouds, with rivers, with animals, with trees and beautiful nature, with human beings? And he did. And he was getting very impatient. Until the point where she said, we are ready, almost ready. Can you please come closer to me, she said to him. He did. And she said, now I'm going to chop you into little pieces. And I'm going to put one piece of you in each human being in that place. That is called the bird. So when every one of us find that little God in us, we have found the authentic selves and the power that that God has given us. But the more magical thing is, we actually bring him to life through our own stories and through our emotional vulnerability. So for me, this is a beautiful story that is also connected to a poem that one <coughs> beautiful actor wrote in Belgium. And the poem is, if it's true that God is God, and true that human are human, we still have hope that God as a human is still amongst us. And each day humans become gods again. So again, going back to emotional vulnerability, we can choose to use it as a weakness or to use it as a strength. There are so many tools to use to become powerful and to tell your stories with that love we can. We came to live free life in unity. So I want to tell you about another story as well, about fear. When I was asked to sit still and meditate in order to find myself, it took me a long time to understand why I was in fear. And fear is one emotion that a lot of human beings, a lot of all of us run away from because it's very uncomfortable, it's very painful, and it leads to more suffering. But what I have learned in that sitting and acknowledging and seeing my life into little pictures, through that suffering, I've acknowledged that the more I run away from my suffering that I haven't shared in the previous years, I understand that this is gonna make me more stuck and it will unlock more emotional disease and then physical disease because that's what happens when you don't share how you feel. So fear for me was a fight at the beginning. In the middle I started giving up and at the end I surrendered to fear. I would not be able to explain with human words what happens when you surrender to fear, when you stop controlling your life, when you stop fighting with the pain but you welcome it and you actually cherish the pain and look at the pain that this is something that is teaching me life. Because when I had depression as well, through that pain, my only question was, what am I learning here? I can take more pain, that's okay, but what is the learning? And what am I supposed to do instead of masking it with medication? And again, going back, emotional vulnerability. Speak about it. Share your story with your friends. And don't worry who's going to accept you or who's going to reject you. That is not a worry. Just be yourself. So thank you very much for listening to me and for letting me be part of it.